Ooh, what is up you guys and welcome to another week of the Valhalla Pugma League and yeah we're going against actually the Aberdeen Azel Vordarud which is actually the previous season's winner so it was really hype going into this game because his team is actually fairly tough and we actually allowed me a Kangaskhan for this season and since he won this season which meant that he get first pick he got me a Kangaskhan so we have issues. There is definitely a Pokemon I have to deal with in such a way that uh, I don't like to be playing, which is to have, need to have a defensive response for Pokemon that is fairly bulky, since I usually tend to, well, I want to go aggressive, which means I usually build with that in mind. I'm going to make an exception for this Wi-Fi battle, however, my team is still fairly, fairly offensive. We have actually a Yasha Berry Landris, full offensive, uh, outspeeds everything in this team actually, even the possible Charizard entry, which actually happened here. Uh, Tauros, which enough speed to outspeed, um, I think there was like Charizard or something like that. Uh, Life for Body Slam, Okos, or two would kill his whole team, so was no reason capitalizing on that. I have the Sod, in case it brought Miss Magius. Yeah, we cracked Miss Magius, I think. Yeah, how about that? Uh, we also have a defensive scissor with, um, I do believe this one had um, leftovers, and a uh, bullet punch. Uh, Defog, um, Rocky Helmet, stuff like that, U-Turn. Uh, it's not a Sweeper variant, it's definitely just here to break asunder Kangaskhan in mind. Uh, my Kama, which is a Totemized variant here, mainly because I was expecting Mr. Mime being scarred for this Wi-Fi Bell. Uh, Mr. Mime was something that he has, wasn't seen that made sense, because Kamo actually is a fairly destructive Pokemon towards this team. So we have a Totemized Dragon Claw, Close Combat, and Poison Jab. No, Iron Head. Um, and just overall does really well against him, I'm definitely looking forward to using it. Jolteon standard variant here with uh, I do believe Volt Absorb and then we have a defensive uh, Mega Venusaur which uh, yeah definitely looked uh, to use it as well as I could. Um, it wasn't a defensive response of Pokemon that didn't make it, <laughs> so Mega Venusaur is probably my most expendable member here. I saw that everyone else just makes sense. I think, no, Jolteon's Jukaburi to be able to actually deal with the Nidoking 1 versus 1. Uh, so we're dealing with a team that I was expecting. It was a few mishaps here. I definitely didn't expect potential of Silvalli making it. If it was made, it was going to be a Silvalli steal, since he can actually bring whichever Silvalli he wants. But we see Nidoking, Kangaskhan, clearly, uh, Silvali, Mr. Mime, which I said here, definitely going to be Scarfed. Umbreon, which is a very defensive Pokemon, but not a threat towards my team, actually, because every Pokemon I have can do enough damage where it can't wish patch anything, really. And Charizard, which I was expecting. Uh, he also had Malotics, was between those two, but Charizard makes sense for the matchup, because it does kind of forced me to play a certain way and it deals really well with my team. The flying and uh, fire combination is something that is annoying and I have to of course respond accordingly towards that. So yeah, of course with everything in this in mind, let's of course see how this game went. I'll definitely say this, that I have to speed up a certain section of this game because it got really stolly and it is because we got the matchup that wasn't ideal, but overall I said it was an interesting game. So with that said, let's see how it went. So while leading off my Landorus, the idea here was actually just to uh, get rocks up the field, but we see Nidoking King directly since of Yasha, I'm actually going to decide to go directly for Nut Primer, just an Earthquake, I really just want to see whether or not it was Scarf, so since I switch out, probably not Scarf, we see Silver Valley, it actually turns out to be Silver Valley Ghost, which I didn't expect actually, definitely, you know, it makes sense to some extent, but I thought Steel was the one to make more sense, so with that in mind, yeah, I'm gonna keep going, like, there is no reason for me to be scared of this. If I get Seal Valley out of here, that only means that I can get up rocks and they are gonna stay. As he goes for Shadow Ball, Stab Damage, and uh, yeah, it does fair. It does fair, that just because it's a crit, however, uh, I'm still in a spot where I can U-turn out and get, you know, everything I wanted. I, he will decide to switch out though, which is unfortunate, and goes actually to Umbreon, so we will get a good chunk of damage here. Though I preferably would have liked to have rocks, it still isn't my biggest priority, even though Charizard is a tremendous threat towards me. So we're gonna bring in Thanos, which is this, <laughs> the glorious, the shiny combo. And since we get an honest chance of actually setting up, I'm actually gonna go just directly for an Antonomize. Now, I will say this, um... I regret not having Dragon Dance, as he going into almost good, which is a Silver Valley, and I expect him fully to have Ice Beam or anything like that. Uh, had I had, and I really mean this, Dragon Dance in my portfolio, I wouldn't have gone for another one. I wouldn't have fared this, but with this in mind, I will, as he brings in Norbert and Mr. Mime, and, um, no, not Mr. Mime, 
my bad. Um, Shard Sada would do a good chunk of damage here. Definitely a solid 50% since we're adamant. Uh, so it's actually going to decide to switch out. Going to go to now this Mr. Mime. And since he brought in like that, I thought that I have a feeling this could be focus sashed. There was no reason for bringing it like that as he actually switched out and he calls my bluff for a. He, he bluffed basically his sash as I switched out. It was a given opportunity for me to actually sweep and I was really, really unfortunate I didn't get the chance to do so. As uh, so I bring in Theta Max, I'm, I'm not going to stay in versus Nether King. He's definitely going to have Fire Blast or at least Flamethrower. Gonna bring Van Height. Biggest chance here of actually going for some damage as it goes with Stealth Rocks. So now he definitely knows that he's not uh, uh, Scarf Variant. So I'll just go for the safe hidden power ice as uh, it does way less than I thought it would. And it goes from Toxic for me, which is quite right actually. It only means that uh, since I, I'm not a Volt Absorber actually, I'm uh, for this battle, I decided to be. Um, uh, or was it for a previous set, so this is actually... I'm, I'm double ST, my quick fate is what I'm trying to say, as... Um, I'll just keep covering him for ice, I think, and he goes to its... Uh, <laughs> the Annoying, which the Umbreon, and I, I clearly won't do any damage here, and in fear of that he could try to go for um, the likes of a wish here and try to pass that, I am actually need to do a more solid switch out, and while I could potentially just hard switch, which is what I'm gonna do in case he goes to protect, Basically, what I need to do is go into my Befilgor, which is Landris, uh, see if it goes for Wish or anything else, which it sadly do, which means that I need to go for Rock Slide instead of what I really wanted to, which was Stealth Rock. However, um, I could have gone for Rocks and then try to go for Rock Slide, but I thought it was too big of a risk, as depending on which switch is in, I really just want to knock that out. So, um, in case I don't want to see Sil Valley coming in because they will win the matchup. So, we get Rock Slide. Charizard goes down. We we are in a good spot here. Stealth Rock is no longer important for me since it was primarily towards that Pokemon. Uh, so we'll bring in Mr. Mime. I'll just actually confirm now that he is a Scarf variant and you know kick myself a little bit for not going for the Iron Head to be honest because that would have knocked the Mr. Mime out since I did for Tonomize. So he gets my Lando, which is quite right. Uh, I'll go to Theta Max here. Bullet Punch, of course, will KO here, and you know I'm in that pretty solid good spot where I need to go for it. Uh, as he switches out, which any any <laughs> person would done, it goes to almost good, and uh, we're gonna knock that out. No, I went for defog. Yeah, I did that. Huh? How about that? Cool. And um, that was a good play. Didn't expect that. This batch was for two roughly a week ago, so sadly I haven't been able to record it. As we knock out Sil Valley, and we, we're, we're looking really solid now. There really aren't anything that necessarily are threatening us as king of the VPL, the Needle King comes in. I'm not taking any risk here. I definitely felt that eventually he will grow tired. And I'm gonna bring Torisi on, which is the marvelous Tauros, and he goes for Flamethrower. I was hoping for actually that he would get um, <laughs> the burn here. Sadly didn't get that. I would, I would much rather spam facade at this point as Body Slam is the way to go. Uh, at this point, Tauros looks really, really strong here, and uh, he brings in the Umbreon. You guys will see how ferocious Tauros really is. That's a two-hit kill, people. The Umbreon is not withstanding that type of damage. Tauros is a monster without existence, and it simply isn't falling for a simple bulk as it just will fall. And the only thing we have to worry about now is the Mega Kangaskhan, right? The big mama. And uh, here is where things get rough, and I really, really won't deny that fact. I actually will directly switch out to my Scissor, which inherently might actually be the bad play, because uh, I was trying to catch him off guard here with the Power Punch, which I actually do, and I'm fairly happy with that. The set here is really on par with what it needed to be done. Unfortunately, though we get the residual damage, uh, which is quite hefty if you ask me, uh, due to me not having Sword Stance will mean that... Um, he actually can go fully set up on me, because I don't necessarily do too much damage towards him, and uh, Kangaskhan actually has recovery. Yep, it has Wish, which is really, really, really unfortunate, because it was something I definitely didn't keep in mind, and um, this could be very, very dangerous, because I really, really should have just switching combo head-on here and just go for close combat, wrap the game on clearly faster, since this is a fat variant, because I don't do any necessarily big damage, on the um, uh, Thunderbolt at all. As I bring in Fidamax again, he will go for Substitute, and here's where I realize what this game is going to be all about. It's going to be how, whether or not I can break the sub with Bullet Punch. 
And luckily for us, while well, he keeps going for wishes, bulk himself up, go for power up punches. I I'm waiting for the last attacking move, which is either going to be fire. Uh, sucker Punch was hoping for, or anything like that, as I'm just going to keep going for Roost to be in a healthy spot. Um, I'm going to confirm that Bullet Punch knocks out the um, Substitute, but what I really need to do at this point is actually sack Scissor and uh, just keep going for Bullet Punches as he can't go behind a sub before he takes me out. That's really my only game plan. I need to have him in a kind of a bad spot versus me, and that's not an easy task to do. We, we get him in range, but I think. We are in a fairly good spot, and you know, having a crit here would be marvelous. Uh, but you know, we just keep going back and forth, and um, I'll say it as it is. Um, I'll keep going for attacking here, but eventually I will actually do a little bit of a misstep and actually go for a U-turn, which I never intended to, um, and that is unfortunately because I, I <laughs> my daughter was simply crying a little bit, so I looked over to her and helped her, and I eventually just. Fada had the D-pad on Bullet Punch, but Taylor had U-turn, so a U-turn to um, my Vega Vig Venusaur eventually, and at that point I've lost, because there is no way for me of actually breaking his sub with Sludge Bomb, uh, which you see here is that turn. While I do get really, really close to KOing in, uh, it still wasn't what I was supposed to do, and uh, he gets a wish off, and now he is plus four, and um, he actually his last move is Shadow Claw, it actually is strong enough to KO any of my mons, so I will wrap the game from here because we are now in a series of, I do believe, what's that, 22 turns of this, basically subbing, wishing, getting up to speed, and I can't uh, KO him eventually. I do believe I do knock out the Kangaskhan, I'm a bit unsure, I might know, I might actually not be able to, but I will not be able to win this wife of Bell. so uh, all in all, all I really can say here is... Um, well, I should probably cut the recording. Hold on. All in all, really though, all I can say is that I should most certainly, once Kangaskhan come in, actually have took an opportunity and um, um, when I confirmed that it was Power Punch Substitute, go to Kamo and go from there since Kamo was not easily KO'd since it's naturally bulky. Close combat is well within range of actually KO in the Kangaskhan. So I, f I feel I misstepped that. I definitely was trying to defense check something that I didn't defensively check that well, and uh, quite frankly, I had offensive to pull it out, and I don't, I don't understand my play why I decided to take the defensive route. I was so, like, in my head, in depth with that sister was going to be the defensive respond, therefore was going to win that matchup. That was not how this turned out at all, and what makes that situation even worse is I'm not fully aware of that I stayed in with Tauros and just get as much damage as possible. Um, Kangaskhan would not have been able to, um, it would have lost roughly 50% of its health, um, being a plus 2 versus a combo that definitely would have annihilated it with a Dragon Claw or even go for an Atonomite safely. Um, however, I feel I missed the biggest play here and that is right at the beginning, I get the Atonomite on the combo. From there on out, I should have been very, very able to actually just win the game, consider what Darude brought to the table, which was a lot of defensive shakes for Pokemon that definitely couldn't be checked defensively. Uh, when it was at plus two in speed, so that falls on me most certainly because I do believe I have a golden opportunity to do really well. Um, definitely fall for the focus sash of bluff and the Mr. Mime I got in my head. I should definitely just have gone for it, and I really kicked myself over that because I was playing really well in the beginning. I definitely feel I build offensive momentum I wanted, but I failed to see how good defensively Kangaskhan really is, and well, I deserve to lose for it. I definitely believe. Daru did a, the best of a very tough situation, I'll respect him even more for it, I definitely believe that was the only way he was going to be able to win the game, and I think he uh, was hoping I was going to respond accordingly, which I did in a defensive way, and which made the game easier for him to actually calibrate and win therefore. So, for what it's worth, Daru, thank you for the game, I really think, like I said, you played this game great in the ending there. Though I feel I deserve to win the game in a certain extent, but you can't misstep against a Kangaskhan, and you clearly show just why. So, uh, for everyone watching, thanks for doing just so. I hope you enjoyed this match, and don't forget to look at our week 3 game tomorrow. Yeah, we had actually all the free games, I just falling really behind with my recording. So, it won't be any Who Was Really Bitter episode tomorrow. I hope you guys will forgive me. <laughs> we'll get around to it. Don't worry about it. And also, the team has been updated. I've been changing out a few Pokemon. You guys will see more about that tomorrow. So that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.